What's up, dogs? Six months ago, I called the RF 24-105 an epic all-in-one, and I am coming to you today, mid-road trip, from a new set to say that that is still the case. This time with samples from the R6 instead of the RP. My current lens lineup is more filled in now than it was last time, so I'll explain why and where this lens still fits for me. I recently got an f-stop bag, filled it up with my whole kit, and drove from Pennsylvania to Colorado. I suppose I spoiled this in the intro, but when I reach for this lens, it's still because it's the all-in-one. But let me explain. Early on, when I got this lens as part of the kit with my RP, all-in-one meant that I was reaching for this often and for many different types of photography. I was able to shoot a long focal length without necessarily swapping lenses. At the time, I had an EF 50mm 1.4, the EF 100mm macro L that I could use with an adapter on the RP, and then I also had the EFS 1755 for my T7i. So at the time, that meant if I took only this lens, I wasn't missing out on any focal range. This 24-105 contained all the other lenses at least from a focal range perspective, that I would be able to use. Now, I wouldn't be able to get the most delicious bokeh when I reach for this as it's an F4, but especially on travel trips with landscape shooting involved, where I'm going to be typically shooting F8 or higher for some of those shots, the F4 isn't a big bummer. And that's kind of from the stylistic perspective. From the functional perspective, the increased low light ability in the RP over the Canon T7i kind of balances out that this is an f4, whereas my 17-55 was an f2.8. Nowadays, all-in-one has a little bit of a different meaning for me, at least in the context of this lens. It's still what I most like to grab on a hike when I can only take one, but less out of necessity and more out of compromise, given that I've filled in my kit since. I have the 35mm macro, the 70-200 f4, and though I use it much less now, the EF 100mm macro. All of those lenses have distinct advantages if I were to bring them over the 24-105, but again, this is by far the most versatile piece of kit that I have when I'm not sure what I'll get into, or if I know, I'll get into a little bit of everything. The Samyang 14mm is a bit of an oddball, and I'm finally working on that review, but I don't count that as something that I'm missing out on when I reach for the 24-105. Mainly because 14 and 24 feel drastically different, and 14 remains a specialty thing in any shooting that I do. Namely, dabbling in the astrophotography. And the great thing about using 24 as kind of your everyday wide angle lens as opposed to the 14 is that the front element isn't convex, or at least not convex enough to prevent filters. So on this lens, I can use my Moment Cine Bloom filter, I can use an ND, I can use a long exposure. These are things I can't do on my 14, at least not with the filters I have. Now the feature combo that still gets my goat is one, the weather ceiling, two, kind of this compact pack size, and three, the image stabilization. If you were to slap weather sealing on this 35 macro that we're filming on right now, I would probably reach for this less. I would take that as an all-in-one that's small, but I don't know that we're going to get a super compact weather sealed RF lens in the near future. We'll have to see. But alas, on the RP, this lens has five stops of image stabilization. On the R6, it has a whopping eight stops. Someone check them out. In theory, eight stops allows for some very creative freehand long exposures. In practice, for me, it's extending an arm far out while balancing as I squat, shakily shooting in portrait over a stream to get a crispy shot of this bottle. Shooting 1 25th of a second at 25 millimeters is not the craziest thing. Obviously, you're not going to be using the full capability of the IS in that scenario. If you were more careful, this is a shot you probably could freehand without IS. If you were super stable in your contact points, if you had a few tries to get the sharpest image. But in my case, eight stops means that I can be pretty lazy in taking the shot. Again, arm fully extended away from my body, shooting in portrait, and it turns out pretty good. I'll know that I get that nice blur that I want from the water at 1 25th, while still keeping my stationary object sharp. I can do so confidently, and I can take this shot without needing several tries. And I know that when I throw my arm out there in this fashion to take a quick picture, that it's gonna be sharp and that I don't need to chimp to check that it will be. Of course, I probably did a little chimping anyway. So six months in, we've still got a little bit of a badass over here that's holding up just fine. It's not the sexy 24 to 70 F2.8s or the 28 to 70 F2s that might tempt you in your gear acquisition fantasies, but it will give you a greater range with weather sealing and provides a strong, versatile foundation with which to explore focal lengths and fill in your kit. I got it with my RP as a transition over from my Canon T7i I use it now with my R6, 
and it complements the other pieces I've added as I switch to full-time creative freelancing. If you're new here and you like this, my name is Dan Yashua, and we're damn close to a thousand subscribers. You could be one of them. You should be one of them. I got an interesting comment the other day about whether going with the 35 millimeter macro and the 70 to 200 F4 would be a solid combo. I personally like shooting a little longer. I've loved the 70 to 200 just as much as I thought I would. So that combo, those two lenses, I think I would be pretty happy with if that's all I could have. As a counterpoint, if you already have the 35, that might be one thing to keep in mind if you're thinking about this 24 to 105. You might be able to save up a little bit more, go for the 70 to 200 and cover a lot of your needs with just those two. Otherwise, 24 to 105 is here for you, I swear.